to my channel. Hey yo, hey yo, listen up, listen up, yeah. Hey yo, hey yo, hey yo. The wireless woman. You in charge of the girls, right? I am in charge of the girls. Are you in charge of the girls? I am in charge of the girls. Okay. All right. Welcome back, Wi-Fi's, to yet another underground transmission of the wireless woman still coming to you from room 303, where it is very cold. So I have my pullover, my uh, pullover blanket gifted to me by my mom. She's such a wonderful woman. Go ahead and do me a favor on your way in and like this video. Why? Because when you like it, well, I love it. Also, if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to this channel. And click the notification bell for notifications of when I upload new content and when I go live. Like I told you guys, <laughs> starting next year, I will be working full-time and in school full-time. So I just don't know quite yet what that will look like. So you want to click that bell so that we don't miss out on opportunities to connect with each other. Hmm. I have been doing this wireless woman work now for over two years. I think it's really interesting uh, where this whole thing started and it's not where I thought it would be at this point. And I don't know where we're going, but if you <laughs> are willing to go on this adventure with me, I'm willing to take you dragging, kicking and screaming right along with me. Um, I do this thing at the end of each year where I have a word for the next year. They do it in my church. And so before we go into the next year, you have to like pick a word. And I've had some really awesome words like recovery and gathering. And I'm usually on like a two year cycle. So I will see the word manifest, not in the next upcoming year, but usually the year after that. One year I wrote the word husband down. And about two years later, I had one. But I realize now I should have been a little more specific. They only give you one word, but I needed two. I should have put good husband. Mm -hmm. But um, I have received the word for this year, expectation. And I think a lot of us felt like 2022 was going to be our year. And what's so interesting, I think because 22 has so much symmetry to it, like years like that don't just come around every year. <laughs> I think because of like the 23, I felt like the three was going to be like an omen year. So I was really hoping to get like my whole entire life together <laughs> in 2022, just in case 2023 turned out to be a bad year. But I'm getting this feeling, you know. And, and I feel like it's spiritual that 2023 is really going to be an excellent year for women in general and black women in particular. But 2022 was a good year. It was just one of those weird years that gave us blessings that we didn't really have room to receive at the time. Um, this year for me has been everything financially that I needed it to be. I took a lot of chances in my career and so far <laughs> they've paid off. I took a lot of chances in my love life and had some really great experiences this year. It's just this year taught me how to be content with contentment. I've spent so many years pursuing things and, you know, just doing such dynamic things that this year was like, oh, it felt very lackluster, but it's weird because I got everything. I mean, it seemed like every time I opened my mouth this year, whatever I said came back to me. And that's like a beautiful thing. You think you would be like, oh, geez, this was a great year, but I don't know. It was just... It was just like a uh, year. It was like, we made it. We did it. We did it. We did it. Yay, said we did it. It was like that. That was about it. But 
when I think about the woman I wanted to be, the type of power and authority that I wanted to have with my spiritual voice, I think I actually found it this year. There wasn't too much that I really wanted that I didn't get except a partner. Um, and I think the lovely thing about women is that we have this ability within us to have our experiences imprint on us. You know, we're not impervious to our environment. And I think it's a beautiful thing about women. It can be tough when women are traumatized to see the beauty in that. But we take so much from our environment in. We're kind of like the filtration system. <laughs> we're like the liver of the world. And we take in a lot of ugly things and bring forth beauty from it. Or we try to. Like I said, some of us are casualties of our fragility, of our sensitivity, but we're still the intuitive antenna of the world. More often than not, if change is coming, women are going to feel it. It's like when you're pregnant and you have these Braxton Hicks contractions, right? And you're like, oh, I know it's time. The baby is coming. The baby's coming early. Nope. It's just your body practicing the activities that will prepare itself for birth. And I think women are like that. We're the ones that prepare the way for what's coming next because we have the creative chaos energy. We have the dark yin energy. I keep saying that, not knowing whether I'm right or not. Let me check on that. So chaos energy is yellow. I got to paint my new place this yellow color. Like I've I've got to bring this element with me into my new spot. This yellow is really giving me a lot of life. I got life, brother. I got life, mother. Okay. That's for all of my theater buffs. Y'all knew what that was. <laughs> Unknown. Chaos energy. Yin. So I was right. It is the yin energy. I should probably study these things more deeply before I come on here. But <laughs> a lot of times I just think I'm right. But here's the thing. I usually am. Um. So the yin energy is the unknown. Chaos. Femininity. Night. Decadence. Mm, nice. Nice. Known order, yang energy is masculinity, day, the known authoritarianism, fascism. Ha! Ah! Listen, <laughs> I can't make this stuff up. <laughs> I can't make this stuff up. So, women, if we're truly going to balance out all that fascism with chaos energy, we have to understand what it is and we have to embrace it. And one of the things that has helped me is doing that shadow work. It's helped me to find my femininity in it. Um, it's helped me to go my own way and understand how important that is. Um, we talk about boundaries, standards, and expectations when it comes to what we expect from the masculine counterpart, but most of us never actually embrace our own power, our own energy to understand how to bring balance to that force. And that's why we got a bunch of dark side Darth Vader's, <laughs> a bunch of emotional males out here running something that they don't have the authority to control, which is our chaos energy. Um, so a large part of me putting these words out in the, into the atmosphere and being able to call with any type of authority power back to me has come from one of the scariest, most dangerous things that I've ever had to embrace. Um, but it has empowered me. So I'm going to share it with you. Um, one of the things that I do is find within myself the things that I fear the most and acknowledge the fear of those things and then release it. Because so often we spend so much time hiding from what we fear that 
it doesn't really allow us to overcome it and it doesn't allow us to release the love that we have within us. It keeps the world dark. It doesn't allow order and light to form out of darkness because fear is the opposite of love. Perfect love casts out all fear and you can't perfect being able to love yourself or other people where fear is present um there was a movie um i think the godfather or something like i said i don't be knowing what i'm talking about but usually i'd be right where he says would you rather be loved or would you rather be feared and he said i would rather be feared fear lasts longer than love and that's true fear generally lasts longer than love simply because people will not search for it and acknowledge it and embrace it like they do love. Fear is able to hide out <laughs> and linger <laughs> in the shadows and go unaddressed. So I wanted to share a few things that in order for me to manifest the love that I feel is coming to me, you know, I never really stay single, 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 mingle, single, city girl, single longer than about two years. Um, I'm a wife. I've just had to embrace that and accept that. I'm a prophet. Being a prophet is something that I ran from for a long time because being a prophet, it, it causes you to have to embrace things by faith. And I've always been the truth teller child, the realist. So it's hard to see something in the spirit realm, perceive it, and it not be real. For me, that's been the challenge of my life to see those things that be not as though they were and really operate in a faith gifting because it's the antithesis of how I was groomed and raised as a child, which most of the things that God has called you to in your life will challenge your upbringing. It will challenge your personality in some ways because that's the stretch that faith calls for. It calls for you to get outside of your normal. It calls for you to get up out of the boat and walk on the water. That's what faith calls for. So um, if you're not being challenged in your calling, you might have some layers there. You might have some, some unpacking to do. So I can feel my next partnership starting to form just in certain things that I'm beginning to uh, prefer and dispel. There are just some things that <laughs> suited me for a season, you know what I mean? If, uh, ee, ee, you know, that really don't anymore. There's a changing of the guard that's happening. And I know for me that signals my next partnership because like I said, I'm a wife and um, it doesn't take a husband to start being a wife. These are just things that, you know, when a man finds me, he's already going to find a wife. The man that finds a wife finds a good thing. And so every time I'm found, I'm already found in a wife state. Um, but one of the things I've never really taken time in my romantic life to do is to release those fears. And I saw what a great positive effect that it had on my professional life. You know, I really took some chances professionally this year, really stepped out on a lot of faith, and it really paid off. I found certain things in myself that I didn't even know where to look for them simply because I was willing to go to places that I wasn't willing to go to before. So I've made a short little list of things <laughs> that I'm going to release in order to attract the right partnership to me. And um, this is not one of them Sierra, Sierra's prayers thing. So, like, <laughs> get your own. <laughs> get your own set of priorities and things that are important to you that's going to you know, find your fears, the things that are really holding you back from taking the chance on love that you need to take, uh, on taking the safe route. Because I had a video I was watching where the chick was talking about how, you know, we get with ugly men thinking that they're going to treat us better. And then it's like insult and injury at the end because you're like, how, how I'm taking a chance on you and you play me. But a lot of us do that because of the perceived safety 
of a of a ugly man you know i've and and that's part of what i'm gonna release here um i'm done with medium ugly men um i know we as women are not supposed to hang our hat on having a man that's attractive but that's what i want i want a man that's attractive to me and so i'm letting go of the fears that i have within myself that i'm not enough that a man I would find attractive would not be attracted to me. And I'm not one of those people that needs a man to be universally attractive in order for him to be attractive to me. But I do not want to be with someone that I have to build attraction for them, that I have to saddle other aspects of the relationship with more pressure than they deserve because I'm not truly attracted to that person. You know, and so my fear of rejection is something that I'm going to embrace, acknowledge, and address so that I can release it and really put myself out there to be found by people that I can treat with the dignity and respect that they deserve, that I can show up as my best self in relationship with, because I genuinely find them attractive, you know, and not based on simply a set of physical traits. But yeah, we're going to throw those back in the mix this year. Because <laughs> I had a short, medium, ugly husband last time, and <laughs> the results came back the same. So. I would like to enjoy space and time as I have so many times before with so many men, with a man that pleases me in every way, that leads with the things that are pleasing to me. I also want to acknowledge a certain fear that I have held for a long time. I really don't want to be with a man that's going to embarrass me in these streets. Um, it's become this thing that you find yourself in relationship with men that don't really actually like you. I'd like to be with a man that likes me, that doesn't just see the utility of me, but actually prefers my company. I have never been cheated on that I know of, that I know of. But I have seen things that I felt like were disrespectful of the relationship. I don't want to be with a dude that's in other females' DMs, that's sending inappropriate text messages, that has a work wife, that makes access to him accessible for random strange women. You know, the Bible speaks about the strange woman. And I don't want to be with someone that prefers the strangeness <laughs> of women to the comfort of, you know, having his one person. I also am not going to be taking any men back from outside of the culture. Um, I found there's this ugly dynamic when you are trying to relate to a man who has a hatred for his own female group. You don't really see it in other cultures of men like you do with black men. But I'm not taking any of the ones that have laid in the bosom of whiteness back. That's going to be on my list because I found that something inherently changes about them. And I know I am um, hypocritical on this one because I do believe that black women can retain their blackness and be with male groups that are outside of the race and the culture but that's simply because of supply and demand there just are not enough decent good marriage minded legacy minded uh black men for the black woman we just have that as a function of our society um, we have put out polygamy as being an answer to that. So I don't feel like I'm saying anything that anybody doesn't already know. And so um, since y'all want to be in a patriarchy anyway, in a patriarchal society, we wouldn't be concerned with who women marry, simply just the men. 
Um, they're the ones that are going to pass on the name, the culture. That's what y'all tell us. I don't believe that as a woman. I don't. I think the black race is a matrilineal society. So I don't believe that. But if we're going with <laughs> y'all's rules, that's that's where we're at. So for me, I would rather be with an image bearer that understands his purpose to his people and his race. I feel like that's the only way that we will have solidarity and relationship with each other. So I'm not taking anybody back from out of the culture. If they've laid in the bosom of whiteness, I'm going to leave them there. I also have a very intense fear of not having enough and not being enough when it comes to my finances. And I want to let go of that. I want to be a person who finds value and purpose in who I am and not just what I do. Um, we hear that a lot with men. They say things like, women don't love you unless you have money. Well, baby, be a black woman. Okay, because if you don't have any and you ask for some, you're a gold digger. Uh, you're a bum, a bum bee, if you don't have anything going for yourself financially. And so I want to release feeling as though my worth and value is attached to my uh, net worth. Because <laughs> honestly, if it was, baby, I would be, <laughs> woo, I would be the woman of some man's dreams. But um. These are things that I don't want to have to be concerned about or focused on in my new partnership and my new relationship. So I am addressing the fear of not having enough, of continuing to live in a survival mode that is keeping me locked out of pushing into those deeper levels of thriving. Because for us as Black women to even have a partnership, to even hope and dream for that, to even want to manifest <laughs> marriages, relationships, and partnerships that are reciprocal, respectful, that are encouraging, strengthening, that in and of itself is pretty revolutionary. That in and of itself is facing a lot of fears that we have within ourselves and having to release it so that we can let love in. You cannot let love into a place that you will not acknowledge that darkness exists there. And unfortunately for us, we have so much darkness. Blackness, and I talk about it in my uh, God Facebook. Y'all should really get that and read it. Like I was really in a bag on that one and didn't even know it at the time. But the blackness is more than just a skin color. It is a psychological construct. It's a consciousness. The blackness is a, def a definition for us as character. And there are so many things that are cloaked in darkness, that are cloaked in blackness. But what I've learned about that shadow, what I've learned about that darkness is that is your chaos energy. That's the place where all things are created from. God looked into the deep, into the darkness of the void and said, let there be light. See, we know that light cast out all darkness, but we don't understand that light was created from it. That they both have to exist. That God separated the light from the darkness and called it day. But he let the night remain because the night brings balance to the day. It gives rest to everything that lives. And a lot of us black women have been calling for this rest, but been unwilling to embrace chaos, been unwilling to embrace the darkness of the deep, and I get it because men are going to tell you, like, don't get in that space. Don't be emotional. Don't, you know, don't trust your intuition. You know, these things can't be quantified. So we become these highly logical beings trying to stave off irrationality, but it's irrational as a woman to not be emotional. And you see what happened when we vacated our own emotions and became these calculated focused, driven, 
ambitious creatures, men came in <laughs> and commandeered femininity and commandeered being emotional. Who cares about the black man's emotions? They came and took it <laughs> when we vacated it. So if we really want rest, if we really want to return to our feminine energy, we're going to have to really, really face our fears. We're going to have to let tears come. And that answered a question for me about something. So we can bask in that moment and see what it does for you. But we're going to have to let tears come. We're going to have to have some tears for fears. <laughs> and allow the cleansing of the tears that we've cried over these disappointments bring new life like all rain does. We're going to have to get back in touch with the things we lost in the fire. And that is my call to women, to black women. It's to take time and get back in tune, back in touch with the things that scare you the most so that you can acknowledge those things, release those things, and allow love, even if it is just love for yourself. Some of us have friends around us that really want to love on us and embrace us, but because it's not coming in the form that we want it to, because it ain't a man. <laughs> Let's just be real. Let's be honest. We are not open and available and accepting. Understanding that that healing love and support and encouragement it may take on different forms and that's okay what's not okay is to hide from your own fears they will come and get you in the light of your successes and we see it with so many, you know, the, the unfortunate thing is women haven't gotten to the same level of successes that men have. You know, when we talk about billionaires and Elon Musk and all that, we're not even talking about white women in that space. And when we talk about Kanye West and Jay-Z, all these things, we're, we're still not talking about black women in those same spaces in that same regard, in that same way. And I hope we never do. I got to be honest. <laughs> I don't think we're fit to be that type of capitalist but i could be wrong i could be wrong because up there there is no male female jew gentile like all those distinctions go away there's just money and what you're willing to do to get it to keep it from other people to have it for yourself to hoard it it just takes a different type of soul inside of you to hold on to that much wealth and not see anything wrong with it you know, the Bible says, let me never be so poor that I steal and forget God. And it says, also never let me be so rich that I say, who is God? You know, you're dealing with a different type of psyche up there. And I played in enough of them rooms to know that that's true. But for those of us that are trying to attain to the next level of enlightenment, where we are, wherever you are, the jump between the level that you're on and the level that you want to go to is what you fear. And to whatever extent you are willing to face down your fears, acknowledge your fears, let your fears have their way with you so that they no longer have power and control over you. That's to the extent that you can have liberation. See, that's liberation and baby, I want it. If you see <laughs> what I see, if you're picking up what I'm putting down. But if you see what I see, if you feel as I feel, and if you would seek as I seek. Okay. Go ahead and drop that fire <laughs> headphones emoji in the comments. I'm looking forward to engaging you there. Go ahead and put out some of those words, some of those expectations. <laughs> that you have for next year and let's see together what we can collectively 
call for ourselves as women. The only reason why I got on here to share (laughs) my end of the year practices with you guys is because I'm expecting a return on what I put out in the atmosphere. So when you see it, ladies, when you see him, okay, you will know, (laughs) you will know how I did it. You will know that it was God. You will know that there's power in what you believe in, what you say, what you allow to be spoken over you. You know, I've had a lot of death spoken over and into me in this area of my life. And I was about to close this video out, but let me take you guys on a little journey. Let me tell y'all a little story here. One of the most powerful things that has taught me the power of the energy and the words and the intention that people put towards you was in my second marriage. My ex-husband always had this habit of doing very despicable things to me and then telling me in the spaces of where I was disappointed and let down by him, where I was devalued by him. He would always come back in and say, but I love you. I love you. I love you. It's me that loves you. Who's going to love you like I do? And having the muscle memory of being hurt and disappointed, but the audible memory of hearing I love you in those spaces, it'll create a very toxic dynamic for you. And a lot of us as Black women, like I told you in the beginning, we get that imprinting on us. So in one space, you're being told one thing while another thing is happening to you. It's like when your parents beat you down for something you did and they'll say, I did this because I love you. You know, this hurts me more than it hurts you. I'm about to hit you, but it's going to hurt me. And look at what you're doing to me. You're hurting me with what you did. And we're supposed to connect the muscle memory of being disciplined in that way by our parents with their pain instead of ours. We're supposed to disconnect from our own pain. And then I guess in some sort of empathetic exchange, understand that we're actually hurting them with the punishments that they put on us. There's been a lot of grooming in our culture, in our society, especially on us as women, when it comes to what love is and how it's defined. So that's why, you know, we have these lists of things and, you know, me like, what you going to do with that list? Change your mind. Change your reality by changing your mind. Um, I'm a huge proponent of having lists of what you will and won't accept, of what's acceptable, of what love looks like for you, and reworking that inner talk. That's what's in the dark side, is that internal monologue of what you tell yourself about who loves you, (laughs) what love is, what love will look like when it shows up. I did this in another one of my episodes where I talked about people attaching meaning to superficial things, you know, like because this guy wears yellow boots and your ex used to wear yellow boots, he's going to be the same person. Well, that's that internal negative self-talk that's coming out of the dark side. And you have to step into that energy. You have to step into that chasm and begin to rework that talk from the inside out. This is not love. This is not what it means to be loved by a person. A person can't tell me they love me and then show me something else. So I hope that we as women can begin to step back into the power of our feminine energy so that we can bring balance to the force. Because what we're watching right now is dangerous. If I have to be quite honest, it's dangerous, the headspace that some of these men are in because they fear accountability and they fail to take responsibility for their own negative self-talk. You know, we cannot be in an echo chamber (laughs) with that type of energy. But if their negative self-talk matches with your negative internal self-talk, It is the cocktail, the actual recipe for a toxic cocktail. And you're going to have to rework that mechanism inside of you. That fear is somehow wrapped up in love. It was the tree of the knowledge of good and evil that did them in. They had tons of trees that were good for food. But they picked the one tree that had a little evil in it. 
It was good, too. It was good, too. But it was just a taste of evil. That was what they were after. And until you root it out, until you get it out in you, you're going to always attract it in the outside relationships that you have. And that is what my first and subsequently second marriage taught me. I've gotten better with each relationship because I learned something within myself about myself. And now I can be attractive in the ways that I want to be attractive in order to achieve the you know, goals the in order to manifest the work that I've put into myself in a relationship that will be supportive and conducive of those changes of that kind of growth. And that's what I want for all of you. And that's why I'm sharing it, because the beauty of being in prophetic energy, of being able to call something out of the dark into the light, is that your words can go before you. And I have so much faith in the work that I've done and in what my, you know, spirit is telling me about this time that I'm going to share the wealth. <laughs> like I talked about in my generational wealth video, I'm going to share the wealth with my sisters so that we can all have an inheritance in this. This is work that is being done on a collective, on a collective scale for us all to enjoy. Until the next episode, though, I look forward to engaging you in those comments. You are now dismissed to your destiny. Section leaders, what is our concept? One band, one sound. One band, one sound.